guys, Matt here from MyRawIntuition.com. Today we're going to go live with uh, Sproutman, the brothers of Sproutman, Ari and Noah Meyerwitz. So I'm excited to talk to those two about uh, sprouts. Now, you know, we're getting into winter time, and so, you know, people want to have some fresh options to uh, have to consume and there's no better way to do that than to start sprouting if you're not already. Um, you know, sprouting has gotten a lot more popular in the uh, you know recently, and so that and so I'm excited again to to talk to Ari and Noah about uh, their experience with sprouting hey, Matt. and what they're offering. Hey, what's up, guys? Zero. Yeah, great to finally meet you guys. I, we got some sprouts here. Do we want to? Um, should we? Should we go through? Uh, I actually, yeah. I'm going out of town, and Noah's going to be house sitting here, and so I, I for me, and I, I figured we would start some sprouts for him to tend. <laughs> I, I, I screwed up the harvest timing, so oh, we don't have sure. any to harvest right now. But the starting is kind of just as fun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, awesome! Yeah. Oh, cool. I've got so mine over here too. Flowers. So I got. Uh, uh, oh, cool! And isn't I got nice. very cool. We got I, I pulled down these three, and then we uh, we we just actually nice. brought in um, three new kinds with the, with red bags. We we when we were redesigning our our, lab, our bags, our seeds, uh, a couple of years ago, we we decided to yep. put them in groups of three for each like color palette, and we'd have like the, the three yellows, the three greens, the three blues. And so we, we, we just launched uh, an alpha brock, which is uh, alfalfa and broccoli. Um, we call it crunch time, another one. It was, uh, crunch time is really great. Um, they're all red, by the way, the bags. That's where I was getting. But the, the crunch time in one of our dad's books, okay. he was talking about the, the legumes, the beans that are easiest to digest raw. And so the four that he named were azuki, mung bean, lentil, and pea. Um, and they happen to go really well together as a sprout. So we put them together as a blend and, and that's the, uh, that's the new bean blend. And, uh, and then red clover, um, went in a red black bag just because, you know, it's a, well, it's a, it's, it's a, it. it's a really energizing yeah. sprout. It's a cousin of alfalfa. It's really balancing. It's got these beautiful, it's a little bigger leaves and, um, we but, figured it would fit with the group. Oh, so you had the great purple bags there with mixed in with the yellow and I, I only have these three at home, and so I, I was like, I love, I just, you know, I love the colors. So, so yeah, the fenugreek. Fenugreek is a really wonderful nice. sprout, by the way, isn't it? It is. Yeah, yeah. that like it was almost like smell. licorice. Yeah, I love that. Who is it? Someone wrote us. Um, yeah, yeah. Kind exactly. of where, I, where I saw, I sort of observe all these um, sprout social media groups and someone was writing in and said, every time I'm eating all this fenugreek and it, it's kind of making me smell like maple syrup. And I wonder like, is something going wrong? And it's like, no, that's a side effect of, it's got this, it'll, it'll pass through and your perspiration will smell kind of syrupy. And, and it's, it's really wild, but it's sprout right. being so concentrated. Everything is just yeah. especially strong. Yeah. But that's, uh, yeah. yeah, so I figured, uh, I mean, I got these, I have some sprout bags that just emptied and hanging up here. Uh, these were the coolest things. I'm, I'm, just to, as an addition to, I just pulled these like pots and pan hanger and I have a lip up there. Like, I carry them everywhere. We have to, I think at some point we have to get them and carry them on our, on our site. But yeah. yeah, yeah, you should. So it, it at, uh, do you guys like recommend uh, or do you have a favorite way of crowding? Um, do you I mostly will, use bags? I mostly, I use both the bags and the jars together. We have our like our stainless steel tray sprouter and then we have the fresh life. Um, I think just for simplicity, I like to grow um, in the bags and the jars because it's the lowest cost entry. And I don't think, I think sprouts, if, if like as we share what we're doing, um, if I'm showing it in something like you can grow in a jar with a yep. cheesecloth rubber, bl rubber banded to the top. That to me is like, all right, well, 
we can show that we're growing. And the barrier to entry is like nothing. Is really low. Like and and sprouts literally need nothing but water to grow. Yeah. I mean, so all we need to do is give them a, a semi ideal environment, yeah. and then they do all the work. And so, um, so yeah, the, a mixture between the jars and the bags. I I love to grow um, the bean sprouts in the sprout bag, yeah. um, and then the leaf ear sprouts in the jar. But um, even okay. that, there's there's really no strict guideline on. Um, the only distinction, um, since you held it up earlier, is sunflower sprouts. They really do have to be grown in the tray. Yeah. Those like to sow roots down and then yeah, grow yeah. up and kind of Which, reach for the sun. And you can get away with them in the bags, but it just, it, it, it makes it, I think it's, or sorry, yeah, or the jars, they, they need more work. I, I think the sunflowers do prefer the jar over the bag just because of the, they they need more sun, sunlight earlier on than some of the other. They're also, yeah. they, they're grown as a microgreen. Yeah. And so a microgreen um, sows its roots down, grows up. And one of the beautiful things about growing <clears throat> without soil, which is what we do with sprouts, is that we can eat the root um, and the entire plant rather than a microgreen cutting above the root. Yeah. You miss out on some nutrients that way. So when you grow sunflower sprouts, you harvest the whole thing and enjoy it. And you know the, the root has a little extra kick too in flavor. So I, I love it. But like on that prefer preference, there is, um, I, do, I do find that seasonally, my preference will change between the bags and the jars, and it's only very subtle. I, I, like they're, they're still, they're always very comparable, but the, the, um, in the summer times, uh, when, when, it's, when it's hotter, uh, the bags um, provide more breathability, and it'll, so that greenhouse environment is already created in that things are warm. Um, but in the winter time, uh, I don't know if, if it gets cooler throughout the day or at night, if it drops into the sixties, sprouts really love to be in like the mid to high 70 degree, um, temperature range. And so, um, they'll put off a lot of heat and in the, in, in the jar, um, the, both the downside and in the winter time, the upside is that there's only one area for it to breathe. So if you hold it at an angle. Um, the sprouts can cover part of it, and it, it'll they'll they'll keep some of that warmth in, and and actually generate and put off a little heat. Whereas the bag in the summer, if it starts to overheat, like um, the jars will will suffer from heat stroke very quickly, and then and create a problem where the where the the bags might let too much of that heat go if the house is in like the low 70s or the high 60s, and suddenly your your grow time is twice as long. So like. You can grow in all weather, but they're like, mm. I notice subtle tweaks in the, in the seasonality of like, um, and it was just, just you know, one other note on seasonality, since you brought it up, um, we're already getting a number of comments from people say, Hey, my sprouts are growing really slowly. And, um, in climates where it gets colder as the tap water that you're rinsing the sprouts with is coming out colder, um, the sprouts are colder. Yeah. And so, um, mm. it's very important not to be putting ice cold water on the sprouts. I because um, they're just too cold. Yeah. <laughs> they just they just want a little more warmth. So we always suggest kind of moving the tap up so it's lukewarm and um, sort of a more comfortable temperature and that'll accelerate the growth a bit. Yeah. Um, so Matt, before we jump into the, the growing, I know we sort of dove in here. Yeah, I wanna just... make sure you don't have any like a, a, a different plan for this or, or some specific questions you want to. Yeah, no, I mean, I'm, I'm ready to just freestyle it with you guys. Um, you know, I've got, you know, a, a few general questions um, that I kind of came up with, but I think they'll yeah. kind of, I think we'll naturally just go through okay. them. Well, let's start from sprouts because yeah, the, the, the key thing that, like, we're always trying to get across is just how easy it is to grow sprouts. I think um, there's, like, there's no reason why people yeah, shouldn't right. all be growing their own sprouts. That's, like, the, the power to grow vegetables is literally just between water, seeds, and a growing device. So we've got all three of those things, so let's do it. Well, uh, my favorite story um, about growing sprouts was I, I had this great conversation. I was in an expo in New York, um, and I was chatting uh, with this woman who had been interested in sprouts. We're talking about like growing your own vegetables and an apartment and, and how there's no barrier for space, and you don't need a garden. You can grow this, like produce your own food. Totally sold. She loved the idea, like bought so many seeds, um, brought the growers. 
Um, I felt really good about it because like she was so into it. She's like, I'm going to grow this, this, this. I'm going to like, I'm making this shift in my life. Was, it, was, it was a really great thing. A year later, we go back to the same show. She comes up and she said, I have a problem with my stress. Like I remembered her and I said, I said what's the problem? She said, I haven't taken anything out of the box. <laughs> I said, well, this is, it's, this is a year ago. What, what are you doing? You got to start. And she said, well, it's just been intimidating. And I said, well, it's not intimidating as soon as you take it out of the box. I mean, here. I'll, and so this was the, uh, so I started with her in the show. Um, and here, I'm not, I'm going to skip the tablespoon for this, but I, I'll use our, our half gallon jar and the power protein because um, I don't have that much left in the in the bag. Um, so it's just, uh, I mean, you put some seeds in the bag or in the jar. Let me see if I can <clears throat> follow you with this. You guys have a, you kind of um, aim for a specific so the, amount the, that you the put in. Will, um, if you harvest them early, they'll double in size. If you wait, you, they can grow, they can grow uh, four to six times. Like lentils will get really long and leafy. Um, peas can grow into pea shoots and really multiply. Um, depends on what stage you harvest them. Um, garbanzo beans, chickpeas, I let them grow. Uh, I don't let them grow as long. They can get leafy, but they, they, they break uh, and they're little. So these will grow about four days, and I'd say they'll double to triple in size. So, And as far as what we put in the, the jar or the back, yeah. um, you'll just generally start with um, somewhere in between yeah. three to six tablespoons gives you a good uh, starting point. And then um, yeah. individual well, preference okay. will sort of dictate what you do over time. So so that's starting them. Um, we will we'll soak them. You get a little, uh, um, you, can, you can rinse them uh, if you want to. And then just do it, just do a quick rinse. And so and then, this would be the eight hour soak time. So we yeah. fill it with water and, and then set it on the countertop. Yeah, okay. so, and then, uh, and then that's it. So, so if, so I, so we'll leave it initially. There's a, a, a rough, a general rule of thumb for soak times because not all seeds have the same soaking. Um, okay. it, I'd say the, the, the more okay. dense the, the, the seed, the longer you would need to soak it, and whereas something, something very um, small like a broccoli can waterlog uh, very quickly. So you you want to you'll have more success. You can over soak something, uh, and with a bean, uh, it, it it has much more that it can absorb and swell. It's like it's they're they're all sponges. They'll all grow, but with a tiny sprout, it's just like it's it'll reach that sponge limit uh, faster. Um, so let's start. Yeah, let's start some broccoli here in the sprout bag yeah. too. You want to yeah. angle it down? So um, we're just going to do about um, we're going to do about four tablespoons of broccoli, and you know just approximate. And we just drop it in the bag. One, yeah, two. So the cool thing about the bag is that um, it takes up really uh, um, not much space and. It can the bag can rival the half gallon in terms of the, what it can produce, and so and we'll just tie that up. And now we'll. Okay. Um, this is just obviously a pot. You can do it in a bowl. Yeah. We we'll fill it up with water, and again, warm water. Yeah. So. green thumb, but I have Amazing. seven quart jars yeah. going at a time. So, it yeah. really doesn't take a green thumb. It's, oh, it does, it's pretty, it's, I mean, the, the sprouts just do, they do what they know how to do, which is grow. I, I had a, um, a live I was doing just sort of an impromptu a while ago, and someone was talking, and I, it was, I was chatting with, with a couple people on, on the live, and they, and they were saying, uh, you know, well, you say you don't have a green thumb, but you've been growing sprouts your whole life. And I said, no, no, I really don't. And they said, no, no, you, you say you don't. But I said, look, I can grow, I can grow pounds of sprouts a week, like, a, you know, 10 to 15 pounds. And I, I can just, I can grow all the food I need to eat out of the sprouts. Uh, but let me take you on a tour of my house plants and I'll show you the ones that are like, and all of, like, I, 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 I don't know if I'm overwatering or underwatering. Like, I, I struggle with house plants. Like, I, I've worked on, I've had jobs working in, in gardens, but I, it really is, um, is this baby stage it does not take a green thumb. Like it, 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 we, I think it beyond the sprout stage, beyond this, this sort of 
um, baby, uh, then, then they get to a point where we can screw them up. Move that up a little closer. <laughs> this is the salad mix, by the way. So this is <clears throat> alfalfa and clover and radish and broccoli. Yeah. So a really, really delicious blend. Um, yeah. one, one note on yeah. um, all seeds knowing how to do is grow. Um, and that's completely correct. And the only distinction is that sprouting seeds are very important for growing oh, sprouts. Yeah. So, um, you know, it is possible to get lentils in a bulk bin. It's possible to get broccoli garden seeds. Um, but sprouting specific seeds for sprouting is super critical because yeah. they go through just an extra level of yeah. um, filtering. So yeah. only the highest germination seeds remain. Um, whereas in a garden, no big deal if only 70% grow, 30% just biodegrade. But, you know, in a sprouting jar, if 30% don't grow, uh, that, that's kind of noticeable. It kind of spoils the crop. So yeah. that's it. Just an important note there. And part of the question. Oh, yeah. Okay. And that then one the, the, the bulk bin seeds are, are for cooking. So, yeah, yeah. you know, those are, those are bottom of the barrel. The, the hierarchy goes, you know, sprouting, microgreens, garden center, um, bulk bin. <laughs> I, so I definitely don't want to try and sprout those. I think someone, someone once yeah, yeah. we were talking when, when we first, uh, um, I think, or maybe it was, maybe it was our dad, or it was one of these lectures. I, someone was saying, I loved the way they said this, um, a seed is like a rock and um, it sort of plants itself in the ground. It'll, the plant will, will get to a place where it'll flower and the seeds will fall. And um, if it rains and it gets, it absorbs enough water to soften up and grow, um, if that plant has life in it, that's all it knows how to do. Um, but if it has no life in it, it won't do anything, and no matter what you do. And so, like, you can't you can't do better with a seed that has no spark. And so, like, it needs to have that spark. And that that's the sort of rigorous uh, testing and seed farming um, is a really interesting practice. And it's it's just it's fascinating. It can be done on a on a tiny level. Like, you can an acre can produce millions of seeds, and like, the, it's just. Uh, each plant will produce thousands and that if you picture a sunflower each you know, each sunflower plant will produce uh, you know thousands of seeds from that 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 base and so if the sun if those are good germinating sprouts if that plant is bred for high germination um, it's really cool it could, trickles down soil health harvesting at the sprouts it lets the plant grow longer so you're not pumping in nitrogen into the soil to keep it's just, so it's it's really um, it has so many positive ramifications to grow for seed. And so like, it really has the power to give everyone yeah. access to vegetables, everyone access to, to food for, so uh, your journey, our dad's journey, our own journey, like finding sprouts because of health um, is like, is where a lot of people, but I think more people are finding it because it has this trickle down um, effect on the environment and it, it, production of like, and it, it can close food deserts. It has like, it can, it's so affordable to give people this access to good food. It's just like, it should be everywhere. And, um, and it's starting, it, we're on a, we're on this sort of uh, discovery path where people are, are, are coming, like uh, coming around. It's like a generational awakening for, for sprouts. And it's, it's very cool to watch. And, it's for many different reasons, but it's, yeah, the seed farming, um, I think is, is one of the big reasons. Uh, it's fascinating to watch. Yeah. Yeah. That was one thing that I always kind of was cu curious about how they, how they figured out which seeds were going yeah. to be well, better it's for sort of termination. It's just, know? it's yeah. just testing at a, at a, at a really, um, you know, large level, large scale level of, of actual growth testing of different batches and filtering. And, um, you know, just like when you filter out um, a group of seeds for, for, for pebbles and, you know, um, soil uh, on yeah. the first test, you're, you're actually filtering for germination later in, in the process. So, well, and, and um, on that note, it's like, all, it's all a, a completely um, organic process. It's just very basic, like um, pull a batch, does this batch grow? This batch grows well? Yes. <laughs> so you keep growing and, and generationally they'll improve because you'll weed way, out the ones that don't. You know, th there are dud seeds are also very evident. Like if a healthy lentil is going to appear very different than, yeah. than kind of a, a dud lentil. It's just going to, you know, a dud lentil may be um, more speckled, not to be confused with, with the French variety, which is actually speckled. Um,
but the color is a little different. And so, you know, the okay. folks who are actually doing this um, <laughs> are aware of those distinctions. So. Yeah, there was an interesting, so we, there's a, um, it's a small industry, sprouts, but we, there's a, there's an international sprout growers association. We meet every year and we talk about um, sort of the global state of, of sprouts and like, and the, and it's really cool. And one year we had a, um, so Noah and I were invited to go there when we, when, after our dad's accident, you know, he was one of the, um, the sort of founding um, or, uh, or early members. And, um, and the first year we were there, there was um, one of the members had gone and attended the Organic Seed Alliance um, Expo. And they, they, have a, they have a board that meets every year. And, and she had posed on behalf of the sprouting industry the question, um, if, uh, so currently they guesstimate that about, or not guess, they estimate that about 1% of Americans are consciously consuming sprouts. It's a very small number, um, a small active mm. group, but that's, that's where yeah. we are. So if suddenly that became 50% of, 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 of just, and that's just the states, and globally that's a whole, um, but if, if, it, if it suddenly half of Americans became um, sprout uh, consumers, uh, could we produce enough seed to make that happen? Um, and, the, uh, and the seed farmers said, absolutely, it might take a, a season of planning, but bring it on. <laughs> like, and, and actually, and then they started talking about all the benefits that it would bring, the, the, the sort of ripple effect, and the overall, if, if we could okay. put sprouts as a, um, as a dominant vegetable in the supermarkets, the land required would shrink, and so the, the, the farmland would, the usefulness of an acre of farmland would expand. It's still like, it just, it continues to, um, to sort of have benefits. And uh, yeah, so very, very cool. <laughs> oh, and that's always something that has all, it's just, it's amazing, uh, yeah. you know, that more people aren't sprouting. Like, it, mm -hmm. it, it can solve food desert situation. You know, it people don't need a yard. They don't need land. Yeah. They can just have yeah. a few jars in their kitchen. I mean, this jar. So we we, right, we fill it up. It's going to soak overnight. In the morning, Ari will pour it out. Um, then twice a day, water sits in there for literally thirty seconds or less. Pour it out, and it's going to be ready to eat in four days. I mean, I don't think it gets much easier than that. <laughs> At the end, harvest time, pull it out, rinse the jar. And do it again. It's it's so easy. <laughs> yeah. So that one hook above the the sink. So I have I usually have three sprout bags growing at once, and then and and I I like to experiment with them. These are these are small um, bags, um, but they they expand and they're fully porous and they're breathable. So the jars can grow a lot of sprouts and usually an adequate amount for any anyone. Um, but I like to sort of push the limits, and I I was. Um, I found like you, you can, it, they become overcrowded at about three pounds per bag of, of sprouts. So I was like, all right, two and a half, two and a half pounds, mm. they're still happy. So, okay, you got two and a half pounds of vegetables grown in five days on one hook. Okay, now I add a second bag. Now you have five pounds of vegetables, um, you know, <laughs> seven and a half. So like you can hang, you can hang five, 10 bags all on one hook um, and each one growing two and a half pounds. I mean, you right. can, that's not taking up any counter space. That's that's a hook. Like, and you can hang that in your shower if you want. Like, that's, people have told me they don't have, you know, places to hang hooks. Or you, you can, can hang it on can, the sink arm. You can and, hang it on the arm. You can put it like, on the top rack of the dishwasher. So, like, you know, as far as like the, the, the square footage required to grow this is, um, it just, uh, yeah, you can grow it on a boat. You can grow it on. Yeah, it's <laughs> like that's, yeah, you can have a multi-tier thing that that takes up space or even jars will take up a, a small amount of space but um like there are there's always an option that'll fit um uh, your kitchen whatever your kitchen is or or your yard or your your car for the road trip or like a bicycle road right. trip i have a friend who went on a bicycle road trip yeah. and i gave him a scrap bag and he was growing he, he took himself to the florida keys and rode all the way up to tennessee and like was growing scrap on the back of his and bicycle. We had someone uh, <laughs> like send us pictures from from a, a like a multi week hiking trip out in the Pacific Northwest, and they had sprout bags hanging off their hiking pack. Yeah. So that that's kind of a beautiful thing, you know, fresh food on the trail. Yeah. So 
So. Yeah. And like I was thinking the jars might, you know, if you have a bunch of glass jars or I guess you use plastic, yeah. but with the bags, that makes it really convenient. Absolutely. Yeah. And it was, it like was kind of fun uh, like when that. you're leaving the natural product show in LA. In <laughs> oh, Anaheim. And the, the, I, I was thinking, boy, this is the most LA story. Only in LA does the TSA agent say, are those sprouts? <laughs> Going on. I always got bags of sprouts. I, I had like I had like ten pounds of sprouts left over from this uh, from Expo West, and we were going through. We're flying flying back east, and and I was saying to Noah, I was like, "Do you think I can get through with all of this?" And he's like, "Yeah, we'll try it." And so we get through. Yeah, they, so one one was up and said, "Are those sprouts?" And another guy comes up. He's like, "Tell me about them." And suddenly, you know, I have their their cards and their contacts, and they're telling me about their health things they've been trying to solve, and like, I'm. You know, we're in the security line, like talking and talking, you know, health and, and growth and the soul. It was, so it was yes. this great unifier. Very travel friendly. Very travel friendly. <laughs> yeah. It, I, yeah, exactly. That, you know, the unifying aspect of it, the, you know, and especially I, I've been really interested in you know, the whole with yeah. with all the, you know, lockdowns and everything that we've been going through, uh, just food security, having sprouts in your home. I mean, if you're not able yeah. to leave your house for whatever reason, uh, having seeds that can stay yeah. in storage Absolutely. for years, well, right? And yeah, I've talked to so many different few people um, about exactly like it's different, many, all of different reasons. Like the, the, it's this unifier, right? There's like, um, yoga studios who are doing remote things and they're having sprouts and, and grown in the, in the yoga studio and the cafes. And then there's, there's like the number of like military bases that are, that, that, that like we see on our, on our, on our orders. Like, and, and then there was, there was a, there was a guy buying, uh, you know, he said, yeah. look, I want to be, I don't want to be the only one on my block with food. If, uh, you know, if everything, if the food, you know, supply chains uh, shut down and, um, he was, he said for so, his neighbors. So he was buying. Thing. He was stocking up yeah. so that all his neighbors would have food. He's like, you don't want to be the one guy caught with food. And I was like, this is great. And then there's a woman in the, you know, probably out in your neck of the woods who said, I, you know, I haven't, I haven't been leaving the house much, and people are asking me how how I get fresh food, and I've been growing my own sprouts. It's like every walk of life, every <laughs> philosophy, yeah. every um, every the, the end goal yeah. is that we need vegetables. We need plant everything on this planet needs plant life and you know all, and the, if you're a if you're a carnivore then your your meat gets its uh gets its nutrients from plants and if, if you're like it just what whatever whatever um your philosophy sprouts are the unifier it's like it's the addition to every diet and it's it's very very cool um yeah completely agree it's a yeah doesn't matter what diet you eat, you know, vegetables, I mean, pretty much everybody recognizes yeah, that vegetables are and, a super you know, important part. Probably not of, um, so much of an issue with this audience, but we hear from folks who um, don't like to eat vegetables and have a really hard time and are told they need to eat vegetables. Mm -hmm. So they come to sprouts because they say, maybe I can eat less and get a better bang for the <laughs> plateful. And we're like, well, yeah, that's true. That I mean, a, um, a radish sprout has 40 times the vitamin A when compared to a full grown radish. Yeah. So it's like ultra concentrations of micronutrients and enzymes and um, the, I mean, it's super and minerals. It's like, so, it, yeah, these babies um, are you know, like just holding one up. Like this little guy, before the roots are developed, before the leaves are developed, it's all potential. So all that, that, all that future um, energy that's going to go to developing the root structure and creating the new plants or that, that hardy stock, the part that we don't eat. It's just uh, not it's, to mention it's all contained in what we do yeah. with the sprout. And not to mention the bioavailability of it, like the fact that it's alive when we eat it, which most food that we, most produce is traveled. I mean, it's like, Well, there's actually, I, it's really hard to think of any other thing that we eat with the roots intact that's yeah. still alive. And, yeah. um, it is cool to see more and yeah. more um, uh, sort of planters in the in like co-ops that are that are housing like the basil's. More often right. will come yeah. with planters, and then you can harvest it from it as you're going. But then, but then of course you're transporting dirt, um, and like and I see that when we've done shows in the West Coast, there's a lot more um, like produce 
bought in planters, so you're harvesting it fresher. But still, like that's it. you're 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 creating yeah. um, a band aid to bring a garden to you. <laughs> like this is just how this is. It's not a, it, there's, yeah. it doesn't need any manipulation. It's just <laughs> yeah. I feel like we're getting like we're we're getting warmed up on the idea, so we're getting off in a couple spaces. <laughs> right. Yeah. And that's that's another thing, you know, people um that are looking especially the cost aspect of it, you know, you don't need to buy soil. You don't need to buy, you know, the the wood to yeah. make your raised garden if you want a raised garden or you know, all that it's I mean Pretty much any way you look at it, yeah, routes really. yeah. are, are Our dad like did a, number uh, one. He had in the in the 90s, he made a, a plastic grower called the Sprout House. And it was I had this great cartoon with like a little Sprout family inside. I loved it. And I remember being a kid and we went to a, uh, a friend's house with a, because they had a TV to watch him on. He went on QVC and like pitched the Sprout House. And you can see it. I think it's, it's on our website uh, in a couple of places. But... You got this old infomercial and he's pitching. He said, here's the Sprout House and blah, 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 blah. And just for pennies per pound. And, you know, you can get your own fresh vegetables. And it's true. I mean, that like, it was so infomercially, you know, the delivery. And it was like, he felt every, like he was a little, he's like, they kept rushing me because I only had 20 seconds or something. <laughs> and he wanted to like, explain it. Um, but it is. But it is. It's pennies it per is pound. It's literally pennies per pound that you end up harvesting these greens for. Yeah. And... Um, very hard to do that any other way than growing sprouts. So, um, I mean, it's economical, it's nutritious, it's quick, it's yeah. easy. It's like, there, we haven't found a downside yet, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is there a, a certain variety or, or that, um, you know, you recommend for yeah, beginners well, so or think does it not matter? The big thing for people is I think most people have had sprouts, like they'll buy a sandwich that'll have sprouts. And so most people are familiar with the flavor of alfalfa. Um, and and I like to show people variety. And I think the, the best way to sort of knock your socks off is with a radish sprout, because like if you're not expecting it to fully, t they are vegetables and they taste like what they are. And a radish sprout will, will taste like a spicy radish. And so our salad mix um, is kind of my, my beginner recommendation for the leafy green. Because it'll, it'll, it's got broccoli, um, it's got radish, it's got alfalfa, and it's got clover. And so it's, it's this like balanced thing, but it, it hits you with a bunch of flavors. Um, and then usually it's like, uh, so power, we have our, our starter kit, which has those th three. So power protein, which got a bunch of beans, which are just are so crunchy and tasty. It's like, and then um, mung beans. It's, yeah. it's such a great snack. So. Yeah. It kind of gives you the, the best of the three worlds. And yeah, yeah. it's also a nice array of uh, flavors. I, I also love recommending the salad mix. Yeah. Um, because, you know, if, if someone were to say, hey, you know, I've tried sprouts. I don't like sprouts. We, our first question is, well, what did you try? Because that's like saying I tried vegetables. I didn't like them. Yeah, that's my favorite. There's so many options. It's like a, it's like a different. They're goading us. I, I love, I get that uh, a lot of the shows. And every time someone says that to me, it's like, it's like they just piqued my interest. Now I have to, it's, it's a challenge. It's like, well, what are you eating? You try this, try this. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, the, I mean, this, yeah. the uh, yeah, yeah. salad makes a great place to start. The, and that the starter kit, obviously, uh, yeah. has those things. Yeah, so um, the three of those together will, um, will create a nice salad. So I think, I think if you want to create the, the, um, the idea that sprouts can be a whole meal, um, grow the salad mix. You have the, the power protein, right. you've got, and then the mung bean, you have nine different vegetables. Um, and you can just put a little, whatever dressing you like, or just a little oil and salt, or just a little, I, I like to make a, a miso and tahini dressing, just miso, tahini, and water, and drizzle it on there. But like, you've got nine vegetables, yeah. some miso and tahini. I mean, that is a filling meal, and it's super nutrient dense, it's all raw, it's super digestible. It, that, that's the that's the starter kit. Like that's why we put it there because that one on its own is like, you don't need to do anything or prepare anything. It's all there. Um, just... Yeah, yeah, terrific. So you mentioned mung beans. We got a question in from Rosh oh, yeah. in. Let's see if I can get this to pop up here. Uh, just join. So you, uh, we might have covered this, but do you we did the holes on um, mung bean you know, sprouts with or organic sprouts? Um, 
you know, conventional being maybe a little different. I would might think about weed everything. Yeah. Um, eat the entire thing, the roots, the holes. Um, yeah. It, you know, broccoli has a lot of holes just to go on a little whole tangent. Um, I don't mind eating the holes. It's just fiber. Yeah. Um, some people do. So you just put it in a little bowl with water, swish it around, the holes will float away. You take the sprouts out, ready to eat all cleaned. Yeah. Um, so, you know, personal preference, but no reason why you can't eat the holes. I think people are used to seeing the way that we present sprouts in the, in the grocery stores, like commercially grown sprouts are pristine. They wash off. They have these like baths yep. that they give them with rakes that shake everything off and then the holes sort of get swept off. There's a little drain. It's a really cool operation for how they de-haul things, but it's not necessary at all. And so like growing at yeah. home, it's like it's more alive. It's a little more raw and uh, raw in, in the yeah different sense, but um, <laughs> they're all raw. Yeah. It, but totally edible, pr totally, it, the, with the one exception being the one sprout I find unpleasant to eat the holes is sunflower. Um, yeah. I think they're just, they just, they're, they're pointy oh, and I'm, they, they're totally edible, but you're eating this juicy, soft sprout and then you get a pointy hull that, that like, <laughs> anyway, personal preference. Yeah, 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 exactly. The black, like, well, shell you piece. Can. It's edible, eat that? but I find it unpleasant. That's like the only <laughs> exception. I think that's the only thing that I actively it's a, take It's all. a pretty universally unpleasant experience. Yeah, it's, I think it's, <laughs> yes. Yeah, I don't think I'm like speaking out of left field there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, so we got another question in uh, here. Let's see here. Uh, if the leaves of the sprouts have little black no, dots so that's in them, the black they have dots, to be tossed. Um, it, it can be a an early symptom of a future sort of ailment for this for the vegetable, but often sort of black or brown um, is is uh, um, it's either um, oxidation or some in some cases like broccoli has a very dark hull, so it can it can bleed pigment onto and these little leaves are so young, the the relative size of the the, the black hull leaving pigment on it, it'll look like and they'll actually absorb yeah. it yeah the, like, the best way to um you know tell the difference is just do a sniff test yeah so you know if if you sniff it and it smells funky then you know be cautious yeah yeah we have a really but, good ability to weed out uh um food that's not good for us um, with the nose but otherwise um yeah, yeah. they're just fine Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that reminds me. Um, that seems to be like one of the the main questions that surround uh, like sprouts. Whenever you bring up sprouts, I seem to always, you know, if it's like if I'm presenting to a class or something, somebody always wants to know about like yeah. um, like food poisoning from yeah, sprouts. And, there, and there's a, uh, do you guys get that question? There's a couple easy answers to it. So first, um, there's never been an issue with home sprouting. Um, second. Um, Sprouts are actually one of the most highly regulated industries in the food industry. So commercial sprouts are, I mean, I have zero qualms with eating commercially grown sprouts, zero concern whatsoever. Um, the, it's a, such a small industry that negative press lasts much longer than it should. You know, uh, very few people are still talking about romaine right. lettuce and the outbreak. Or cantaloupe. Um, I don't even remember when that was. Yes. Uh, you know, because... It's, they're such big industries and they're just so normal. Um, they don't stick in the same way. Yeah, and cases from like 2000. The, the problem is anytime there's a wave of enthusiasm, things with bad practices start. Someone will, uh, will start, you know, riding a bicycle and growing sprouts on like, you know, and selling it. And like when you have raw food and raw meat, like most any risk will come from introducing a foreign object. So right. you, you're either sharing a refrigeration truck with raw foods going to, you know, a restaurant that's preparing, you know, X, Y, and Z together. Um, but like there have been outbreaks in every food group. It's just that we're such a, like, like Noah said, we're such a small industry um, that the, it's just, it's very difficult to get the good press through the bad press. But the risk is, but notice that there's no issue. There's not been a single outbreak with home sprouting because plants have their own immune system and grown organically. 
we test for everything. You know that the seed is healthy. They right. spend their all, all water sprouting seeds. Um, in addition to being filtered out for germination, are tested for um, uh, contaminants like Salmonella, E. coli, and a whole myriad of other bacteria. Yeah. So um, they're incredibly safe. Yeah, it's, but that that's another reason why getting organic sprouting specific seeds is important because you get that assurance. Like we have the the, the farms, we get them. Um, test it, uh, the, then it goes through a, a sort of organic certifier importer. There, they test it, and then we test it. So it's triple tested. And then on top of those three testings, we personally grow every single lot that we sell. So that, like, there's, a, there's a personal like, oh, this okay. I have notes on every single lot, the lot number on the back of each bag. Like I have, I have a folder with notes on every single one of them that I've personally grown aside from all the labs. So it's like, we, it's triple tested with the fourth test in there just being our own. So a long, a long winded answer to say, no, no issue. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No reason not to be. <laughs> but yeah, we get that. We get asked that. Um, I think we get yeah. asked that for people. It's becoming, interestingly enough, it's becoming a less common question. I think there's a, there's a new wave of enthusiasm around sprouts mm -hmm. and it's not, uh, I, I think because the industry yeah. is so controlled and so diligent about making sure that we have no bad you know, press. So they, we've taken so much uh, um, energy and put it towards making sure we have the healthiest uh, produce available on the commercial side mm -hmm. uh, that um, it, yeah, the newer, pe the newer discoveries of sprouting is just, um, it's all about the benefits and how easy it is to grow as opposed to any of the old, it's, it's just, yeah, which is exciting. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, uh, I, I personally have been sprouting for again, probably close yeah. to 10 years. I've never had an issue with it. Um, you know, so yeah. And, and like mm -hmm. you said, the, yeah. the regulations are so tight and it's great that, that, uh, that question is starting to, you know, dissipate a little bit because there is, it's, it's so, it's so great to see so many more people getting into this and I'm sure you guys are seeing, you know, this more than I am. Um, but it's just, uh, people are starting to realize that, you know, like we talked about today, there's so many benefits to eat, to sprouting at home. I mean, from the cost to the nutrition, to the convenience, you know, the environmental benefits, um, can't get any fresher food than sprouts really there's no travel involved you know it's right there it's it's yeah, even less right. travel than having to pick it up at the grocery store so the carbon footprint you know, it's like i mean it's just making sure yeah. you get the seeds and yeah. that's about it and you can stock up so like if you get i think the the so we we're talking about how much seed you would use so i'd say for beans and legumes um they double they go one to four four times their size but for the leafy greens the smaller the seed um, they'll grow about 10 to 12 times their size. So um, a pound of seeds will grow you 10 to 12 pounds of food. So if you're growing, if you get two pounds of seed, you've got, you know, 20 pounds of vegetables, I mean, waiting for you to grow. And so you can, yeah, the carbon footprint for that is, is, uh, um, is pretty minor. Uh, even, yeah, it's just, it's, it's, uh, I, yeah, well said. <laughs> Um, so do you guys do you guys happen to do anything like chia or any of the, like the gelatinous, um, yeah. gelatinous. the mucus? So the, the only um, gelatinous yeah. variety we have now is mixed into our broccoli blend. Um, we we had chia and arugula on their own. Um, having a, a we were having a harder time sourcing them. Um, planning to bring those back out. Yeah. Um, and also uh, garlic chives, which is a very cool one. But um, the the process on the gelatinous seeds is a bit different. Those do need to be grown, um, actually like a terracotta tray works really nicely or on the outside of the sprout bag, using the sprout bag as a surface, laying the seeds and then misting it with a spray bottle. Um, that works really well. But um, those are uh, definitely more advanced. <laughs> so we we'll just caution uh, yeah. folks as you're getting into sprouting to, to start with the more simpler and, and it's interesting 
to say it's advanced just means that you, the process is different. It's more involved. Um, is all it's, it's like, it's, like it's, uh, it's still super easy as soon as you get it. It's just like you learn one way. Okay, you got your soak time just and your rinse patience. I mean, like yeah. arugula may take more like 10 to 12 days to yeah. fully germinate. So we, we sort of like to set everyone up for yeah. quick gratification success you know but. yeah sure there's a yeah there's a there's a bigger plan and and that that includes bringing bringing back the gelatinous seeds but uh yeah we need to uh, get people uh, we have to get the education infrastructure for that different type of growing before we do <laughs> yeah yeah uh maggie says hi from ireland i was a fan oh, of your thanks, dad maggie. sprout yeah. man he was great appreciate that a yeah. lot he was pretty great Yeah, definitely. It's I love. Their, I, I their, still watch his videos. <laughs> really, he had a great way of um, taking complex information and making it really, um, really easy to understand. And so, it's, I, yeah, we I go back and watch watch. He finds the longer so much information, longer lectures. lectures. <laughs> yeah. He loved car analogies right. for your body right. studies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it does. laughs> they do. It's yeah. like the juice fasting. Yeah, they work so talking well. Talking about yeah. oil changes or doing you know, annual maintenance, uh, you know, you can't, you can't drive. Yeah, there you go. There, there it is. Yeah. Nice. So we're actually, we're doing the, it came out of that book. Um, he wrote the, the seven day just juice diet. Um, so that was the, the like in depth one. And then the seven day just juice diet was just a, a step-by-step -step, um, uh, how to on the juice diet, on the juice fast. And uh, every year we do an online, a free online, uh, version of that and we just all together we both do it we we partner with our friend jenny ross she's a raw food chef and out in california and um we do that every january so that's coming up it's like yeah surprisingly soon so we... cool yeah, how, so, how so, uh, we'll sign up for that just go to the we're going to be launching the sign up page this coming week um it's going to be on our instagram and on our site um but it's a yeah, really cool. lovely community last year we had just over a thousand folks um, from all around the world on it. We, we had a, a Facebook group and um, some other ways to engage. And it was, it's, it's fun because, I mean, you've done the fast. Uh, doing it with other people um, is yeah. really nice because otherwise you're kind of in a bubble. At least um, you, know, you go out into the world and you're the only guy yeah. who's juice fasting. So what are you doing? Also, it's <laughs> January and everyone sort of, I love, I, I, I took a picture a couple of years ago of, of my juices. I made them all in the morning and I had my, my like eight mason jars, eight ball jars filled with whatever. It was the grapefruit, the, the, the two green juices. My like, my, I had some miso broth I'd strained and like I put them in the snow and I took a picture of it and like put that on the, it's fun. It's like January and, and juice fasting. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's all based on that book. It all came yeah. out of the book you held up, which is, Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I juice fasting and detoxification. That one is a is a novel. But yeah, all the car analogies, the oil changes. So it's coming up time for our annual maintenance. We'll be we'll be changing the oil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. Well, that's awesome. Um, is is there anything else um, that Sprout Man is you know has in the works? Any exciting yeah. news? I mean, I know you guys just launched your new. Oh, we've uh, we've got a very varieties um, and all that, but is going to be a very you know intense tease. Um, but it's a it's a uh, we'll, we'll just say uh, stable sprouts or something like that. Oh, right? there there's a and um, we're going to be launching them in early next year. Yeah. Um, so to take something that's already so convenient and just turn it into a different form and allow people to get it super simply. So definitely keep an eye out for that. Cool. Different, um, different ways to get sprouts and making it even, even further removing the excuse. Um, <laughs> and, but no, there's a, there's a very exciting that. Yeah. Like Noah said early next year. Um, it's a very exciting uh, thing and we can't, we, I wish we could say more, but where it's, you don't want to tease it if it's five months out <laughs> too much. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> well, then, um, so again, so what are, what are the new clover, varieties that you guys just came out with? Alpha, Alpha, Crunch Time, which is a, like awesome new blend and then Alpha Brock. So yeah. two of our favorite varieties in one mighty sprout. Yeah. Blend. Um, 
so so those are cool. And I think awesome. alpha brock is the one the one thing with the salad mix is that the, if you're eating a lot of it, it eventually can the radish can get a little spicy. And so if you want to just eat pounds of it all day long, I think mm. the alpha brock is because like, broccoli can be kind of mustardy and uh, alfalfa can be a little bit on the sort of um, mild side and you want a little bit of excess. So the two together, you can just eat pounds of it all on its own all day long. All, all, so that's, that's the alpha brock. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So we're, and, and, uh, nice. It should be, should be right up on the homepage of, at, at sproutman.com. So yeah. Um, very easy to find bright red. They actually, I didn't notice until after, yeah. uh, we, <laughs> after we launched them with the, with the green Sproutman here and then the red label, it's like totally Christmas colors. And, and I looked at them and I was like, oh yeah, okay. It's perfect timing. We're like, Entering holiday season is winter it's, time. It's a very timely launch. It's a very timely launch. <laughs> yeah. I like it. That's cool. Cool, guy. Well, I mean, uh, anything else, um, you know, that you, you wanted to cover or, or share? Well, um, before I would we say, kind of wrap up? Uh, I would say no. And I just wanted, I would want to say thank you so much for, first of all, your patience getting, like getting this, this out. We've, I know it's been the last, Two weeks have been just mayhem, and uh, I'm glad we could we could get this call on, yeah. uh, in today. And, and so it's and it's been really really uh, wonderful. And and the work that you're doing is um, is phenomenal. And um, and your journey is fascinating. So it's been a real pleasure to get to know yeah. you. Yeah. Is my well, thank you. It, I mean, <laughs> it was it was definitely worth the wait, and. I and you guys got so much going on. I I was just hoping, you know, that you guys would and we'd be delighted to, to, you know, to connect busy, against you. But yeah. I do just want to say I, I think that one of the things that slipped through the cracks in the last few weeks was getting you um, an affiliate setup. But for for all the folks that you're bringing here who want to support you, um, who are going to get into sprouting because of this, um, we got to get them uh, the right link to <laughs> to, we'll, to go through. So. We'll send you Noah's. Uh, I'll follow up with very right after this. <laughs> Uh, very quick on these things so we can uh, yeah we'll make sure you have the link yeah, <laughs> yeah. sounds awesome um, I'll definitely I'd be happy to support you guys in any way that I can I love what you guys are doing you know I love the message that you guys spread and yeah I'm just it's a privilege well, to, uh, to be able likewise. to help yeah. people find <laughs> really? you yeah so it's been such a treat to uh, to be on the call and uh, if there are no it doesn't look like any other questions came in, yeah. and thank yous, and we were uh, grateful yeah. that all of you tuned in. And yeah, so we'll you. we'll uh, I guess we'll make sure to save yeah. this on the on, on the on the channel. So very cool. Yeah, for sure. Ah, uh, so what com. is the website that <laughs> yeah. people should go to? Yeah, Sproutman across all channels, and uh, yeah. we are. Awesome. Um, I'm Noah. Oh, and I'm Ari. Just for the. Separation, yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, we'll make sure to keep you posted. We'll give you as soon as we launch the the sign up for the uh, Juice Fast. We'll, um, if you're interested, and in any of your followers, um, it's a free fast. So that's the I think that's the the next looming thing, just just around the corner yeah. in January. Yeah. So. Cool. Very cool. Awesome. Yeah. I'm, I'm joining. That'd be awesome. That's <laughs> All right. Sweet. Well, thanks again, guys. And I'll, I'll post, I'm going to post this obviously here to Instagram and then also to my YouTube. So hopefully we can get some new eyes on your juice fast and everything else you guys got going on and get everybody sprouting these amazing little plants yeah. that can well, really well, change happy people's sprouting lives. Everyone so. And to great success. And, and uh, it's been a real pleasure. Thanks, Matt. Thank Take care. You too. Hey guys, have a great day.